Hello fans, welcome to the November recipe of the month. We're gonna to do today a gorgeous wine braised beef. It's one of our best sellers here at Jolo. So we're gonna start off with a gorgeous chuck roast. You wanna use chuck because it has a lot of this connective tissue which will break down and really, you see how tender this is already. It's already pretty tender. So you wanna have a nice chuck. We're gonna liberally salt and pepper both sides. And in the pan over there we have some Regular salted butter. I like to use salted butter. And there's a lot of beef here. So what you want to do is make sure it's got plenty of seasonings. That's why I use the melted butter. So I have some melted butter in here, high heat. And we're gonna sear these about four to five minutes per side. So we're gonna let that go, high heat. We're gonna get nice and caramelized. And you can see it gets a beautiful caramelization. Sometimes it sticks, which is what you want. So you see that nice brown? That's what you want, that caramelization, which we're gonna use in the bottom of the pan later when we make the roux. We're gonna show you how to make a beautiful roux. And this is really a one-pot cooking process. This is really great for the fall, the winter, even spring. You can do this with pork, you can do it with beef, you can even do it with chicken. So we're gonna let this sit for another four or five minutes on that side to get the same color. And then we'll pull that out and we'll show you how to make the vegetable roux. Now we've gotten both sides nice and brown, about four to five minutes per side. And now you can see in this pan, you get that beautiful protein caramelization of the fondant. We're gonna use that in the roux. We're gonna turn the heat down to a slow, slow, low heat. Because now what we're gonna do is gonna make a roux. I like the nuttiness of olive oil and some of the backdrop of flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to that. Any fat works, especially the fat from that beef that we just rendered off. We're gonna throw in some onion. We're gonna throw in some carrot and some celery. I like to make them thick, a little bit bigger in cuts, so this way they don't break down while you're cooking it for a few hours. So this way they, they're a decent size and they hold together texturally. So those three things are called a mirepoix. So you have celery, carrot, and onion, classic mirepoix. It's gonna take a little bit of salt and pepper to that as well. It's called layering of seasoning. You want everything to taste good by itself so when it comes together, there's no deficiencies. So now we're just gonna take that with a little bit of flour. Low heat, and we're gonna put some flour in here to thicken it up. You should use about one part butter or fat and one and three quarters, one and a half parts flour. I kind of eyeball it. You can see here, you just want a nice little thick paste so it'll continue to cook down and bubble. We wanna get this to what's called the blonde stage, which is about 20 minutes of cooking, which cooks off a lot of that flour flavor. And what this does is acts as a thickening agent. If you don't want to use flour, you can skip this step and just do the vegetables and then later add what's called a slurry, which is equal parts cornstarch and water. I tend to use wine instead of water for the fluid, just to add some of that backdrop of flavor and acid. And then the last minute when you're ready to serve, you can add what's called a slurry to that. A little bit at a time, just bring it to a full boil, it'll act as a thickening agent as well. So this adds just a degree of complexity because we'll get that toasty nuttiness from the flour cooking down. And we're getting all these scrapes off here. See, we're scraping all that at the same time. You want all that goodness in your wine braised beef. Well, here we are, we're gonna make what's called the bouquet garni, or a garnish bouquet. So you could just throw all of these herbs into the wine braised beef that we braise, but um, you have to pick all this out, especially these bay leaves. You only need one or two, they add a ton of flavor. They're actually leaves from the laurel tree, but very aromatic. I have some rosemary right from the garden and some dry thyme that we dry here as well. We're just gonna take and make a nice little tea bag basically out of this. This way you can just pull it right out. We're gonna tie a little knot around here. You don't need a Boy Scout knot or anything, just a regular knot like on a shoe, like that. Do one more. And then what we'll do is we'll put this in with the wine braised beef as it braises and we'll hang this out and tie it around the handle of the pan so we can pull it out easily. You'll get all these beautiful aromatics of the cheesecloth. So we've let this cook down for about 20 minutes to get to the blonde stage. There's already some nice nuttiness going from that flour that's been cooked down. I did not add the garlic earlier. I like to add the garlic at this stage to avoid it from burning. There's nothing worse than burnt garlic and it happens almost instantaneously in high heat. So what I've just done now is I've turned the heat up to high. I'm gonna add some of the garlic in. And this is gonna braise for a few hours, don't forget. We're gonna stir that in, get more of that goodness off the bottom of the pan. Now some of the flour sticking to the bottom of the pan. So you're gonna use a high, high quality 
red wine. You might not want to use such high quality. You might want to opt for like a nice old Lafitte Rothschild Bordeaux or maybe an Opus one or a Sasakaya from Italy. But um, maybe reserve this for the actual dinner course. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna add this wine and we're going to reduce the wine. And this is gonna act as the agent that gets all of the beautiful bits and pieces off that pan. And this will start to thicken as well because we have that roux in there as a thickening agent. So you can see here, we're going to stir all this up and get all that roux off of the vegetation that's in there. And that's going to thicken this up. And as it starts to thicken up, you can see it's already, you see the consistency of that red wine. But we're going to reduce this red wine to about half of what it is now. Let it get super thick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some beef broth. You can use it out of a can or you could buy beef bones and add your maripois and add water and let it sit overnight on low heat. So let's pretend we just cooked that down by half. We're gonna add some beef broth to this. And we're gonna bring this to a full boil. Believe it or not, you can do this in a crock pot. You just skip the stage of the roux, add the meat in, all the vegetables, the red wine, the beef broth, the bouquet garni, let it sit all day while you go to work, come back home, and add that slurry we talked about. So now I'm gonna let this come to a full boil and we'll show you the next step. We have that nice Jolo Taj that we reduced to half. We added the beef broth into the roux. We thickened it up, we have it on high. Now for the secret sauce, Heinz ketchup. This is about a third of a cup of Heinz ketchup because I have two large chucks. If I was gonna use one, I'd cut it in half. So a little bit less, maybe a quarter of a cup, a few tablespoons. We're gonna take this and add it right to the base, that'll add that backdrop, that tomato, the acid of the tomato, and you get what's called the udami effect from ketchup, which get the sweet, savory, tangy, it hits uh, all corners of your tongue and affects every taste bud, and then one, that's the udami. So here we are with that gorgeous gravy, soon to be gravy, and now we're gonna take the beef chuck, Put it right back in that pan. Or this, like I said, in the crock pot, you do all this at once. First thing in the morning, you come home, it's glorious. Now we're gonna take that bouquet garni, all those beautiful herbs. We're gonna get it right inside of here. We're gonna take a look at this, Hannah. See there you are. Put it right inside the broth, and then you just kinda hang this over the side or tie it around so you don't lose it later. Secret sauce, parchment paper. We're gonna cover this entire base with parchment paper, wax paper, which you can get. We use a lot for baking. This will help keep all that moisture sealed in, because lids leak. And then we're gonna put the lid on top of that. And then you basically set it and forget it. So really low heat, so you don't wanna brown the bottom. It'll be on low heat, basically, two hours or until that chuck falls apart. Serve it over some beautiful palm puree or even mashed sweet potatoes with some nice fall vegetables and a beautiful glass of Jolotage, or if you're lucky enough, Pilot Fog. Enjoy.